drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hello friends this is manoj prani i welcome you all on behalf of the edupedia world in this particular presentation i'll again go with some of the fascinating topics in order to make you understand a few more things relating to the audit of membership stock exchange come and sit at the edge of your chairs fasten up your seat belts we're about to take off with the first topic of the day and that will be neat system used in national stock exchange this question has been like asked in revisionary test papers multiple times uh, this question is again been asked in c final examination for november 2006 as well so what does neat mean neat stands for national exchange for automated trading system so this is their software database okay you have seen like dalal street you must have seen many of the broking houses wherein this screen always goes on with the kind of like all the information about the stocks at each point of time so that is what national exchange for automated trading system is it's a very like fully computerized kind of screen which is basically done on trading system It enables the members from across the country to trade simultaneously with ease and efficiency by keying their orders into the system it's a single consolidated order book for each stock each and every stock which displays the buy and sell orders originating from all over the country on a real time basis that's that system guys that one system so the orders are executed only if the price quantity conditions match so if i am there on the other side and i want to sell 1000 shares for rupees 50 and you being on the other side of the table you also want to avail the facility of having the 1000 shares for rupees 50 then the execution of order is done because the price quantity conditions match so that's what neat system is all about so if i'll talk about the markets what all are the different type of markets which are covered under this particular neat system that is number one normal market then comes odd lot market then spot market and finally auction market so what happens in normal market is it consists of various kind of books wherein orders are segregated as regular lot orders special term orders negotiated trade orders stop loss orders depending on the time and the order of your attributes the orders which are of regular lot size on a multiple thereof are traded in the normal market itself normal regular market in respect of the compulsorily dematerialized shares the market lot is one share remember that always that is something which is being covered in normal market now if in case i talk about odd lot market as the name suggests what do you think guys odd lot odd lot order is one in which the order size is less than the regular order size let's suppose the lot size is 10000 shares you want only 5450 then what's going to happen is you'll be considered under that odd lot market why because your odd lot order is the one which is less than the regular order size such orders are traded in odd lot market in this market both the price and the quantity of both buy and sell orders should exactly match in order to ensure that a trade takes place 5430 shares buy on the other side of the table there should be another person who should be saying i want 5430 then only price is going to get matched in that particular case and the order will fixed up odd lot orders do not have any other special terms or attributes which are attached to them apart from this thing normal market basically goes with a regular lot size odd lot goes with something which is less than regular lot size then comes the spot market So the spot market is a market for spot orders. Spot orders are basically normal market orders with different settlement periods vis-a-vis -vis the normal market. So pay in and pay out basically takes on takes place on the same day itself, same day. Spot market. That's what which is happening in spot market. Spot market orders do not have any special terms and attributes at, attached to them apart from this that they are being included into spot market and the pay in pay out basically takes place on the same day itself. Next comes the auction market. finally so the in the auction market what happens is uh, the stock market basically initiates the auctions on behalf of different trading members for completing the settlement process let's suppose there is a company which has gone bankrupt okay and nobody is going to purchase the shares but somehow there are some of the companies who are keen to do the auction for it okay why because the assets and the liabilities are still in the good position and they want to avail the benefit of out of the same so what's going to happen is stock exchange is going to initiate that auction on behalf of those trading members Carvi is going to say, "Okay, I'll purchase them for this much." Sheikh Khan is going to say, "Okay, I'll purchase them for this much." Perfect. So all these things will be like covered under auction market. So I hope you guys got the complete clarity with respect to normal market. What's going to happen in odd lot? What's going to happen in spot? And finally, in auction as well.
So that was the holistic picture relating to NEED system that is National Exchange for Automated Trading System. Shall we proceed further guys? Perfect. Let's move towards the next topic and that will be hit or take orders. This question has been like asked in CA final RTP and CA final examination for May 2002 as well. So guys, as the name suggests, hit or take. Hit or take orders are basically the kind of variation for market orders and they take place on the screen based trading in a stock exchange. Basically what's happen is uh, you want to take up the facility of like basically having a contract done immediately. Okay. So what's going to happen is if in case you are going for a real time basis, okay, market is going on and you want to avail that facility of going for the real time basis immediately. So all you need to take is go and go for this hit or take order. They are the variation of the market order and takes place immediately in the screen based system for a stock exchange. It basically enables faster order execution without disturbing the limit order exchange. That is something which is being done. And now if I'll talk about the activity flow, what's the activity flow in this particular case? What's happening is a broker who is interested in a particular script, let's say Reliance share. So a broker who is interested in a particular script of Reliance share would ask the system to display the touch line of that script, that touch line for Reliance. He would then operate certain predefined keys or mouse clicks, which would be different for buy and sell orders. The system would ask the broker to identify the client and to quantify the order. And then the system would then convert his or her buy or sell orders for a quantity that is specified into the limit order and attach the touch line offer price from the buy order and touch line bid price from the sell order. This order will be matched against the jobber coach and the order book for the quantity that can be executed. And finally, all the unexecuted orders of this type are automatically cancelled. Simple. Whatever you are going to achieve, go with that touchline offer price or that touchline bid price. Your order is going to get matched with that hit or take order. And finally, all those unexecuted orders, let's say you fix up some other order and before that you got matched with another order. So all those unexecuted orders are going to be automatically cancelled and thereof will not be stored in the order book at all. See, isn't that too fast? Perfect. So that's all about hit and take orders. This question has been asked in C final examination for May 2002 as well. So I hope you guys got complete clarity with respect to the activity flow as well, how it's going to happen. Perfect. Let's move towards the last topic of the presentation and that will be the depository systems. So guys, the foundation of this depository system is going to be like intact with Depositories Act 1996. This was the time when uh, this depository concept came into the picture. Depository is basically a kind of person who is going to take care of your securities. As the name says, as depositories. So depository is a, is that entity which is going to hold your security in DMAT form. Okay. So it's all about kind of depositories act 1996 as well. And they need to follow the guidelines which are being mentioned here. So the depository system in India is basically being governed by the depositories act 1996 which provides for the establishment of depositories in securities to ensure free transferability of the securities with speed, accuracy and security by making the securities of public limited company freely transferable subject to certain conditions, dematerializing the securities in the depository mode and then finally providing for the maintenance of ownership records in the book entry form. So that's how each and every depository basically ensures that the securities are held in the depository accounts and they are safe, absolutely safe guys. This is something which is far, 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 far more better safe in if we'll talk about the physical certificates that used to be in our father's time or grandfather's time. So that's the way better securities format in that case. So they can transfer of the ownership of securities whenever it's being done in the electronically book entry form. That's one. Number two, if I'll talk about who all are the primary depositories of India, these are two. The major one is one that is NSDL, National Securities Depository Limited and then comes CDSL. So these are the two only major depositories in India. What happens in this, this depository system is securities are held in security depository accounts, which is very much similar to holding funds like in bank account. You are having your funds okay, in your bank account. You can take them up whenever you wish to. Perfect. Same goes with securities depository account. So you have your depository account in which you have like kept your shares, your stocks, whenever you wish to take it up and get them 
passed on into your own hands, you can simply do it off. So the transfer of ownership of securities is done electronically by book entry through electronic account transfers without involving any use of physical movement of securities from person to person. That was a huge cumbersome procedure. So that's the better benefit of it. And if I'll talk about these two depositories in India, major one, National Securities Depository Limited, and then comes Central Depository Services Limited. They provide you the depository services to investors and clearing members through their depository participants. That's all they do. Now you'll be like thinking about guys key, like why depository system? What's the benefit of having a depository system? Then there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. Number one, high liquidity of scripts due to immediate transfer and registration. This basically invites to have the depository system services in place. High liquidity of scripts. Then comes daily what's happening in the market is bonus and right shares are received as a direct credit to the account and it eliminates the risk of loss in transit. Something you are getting directly into your account without any kind of paper format. Absolutely, it's, it's far, far, far more uh, better than that. And then there is much lower risk of bad deliveries. Why? Because that another person is not going to tell you, okay, I released the uh, share certificate from here, but it didn't reach up to you. No, that's just not possible now because that's in dual electronic form. So there are much lower risk of bad deliveries. Also, there will be like reduction in the brokerage charges. You don't need to spend much amount on your paper. So a lot paper is going to save and that's going to result in a lot of reduction in brokerage cost as well. Saving in stamp duty. Stamp duty, no stamps. So no stamp duty is going to be paid up to 1% uh, of the transaction price as well. Saving of courier expenses for documentation, transmission, notary charges, saving of expenses which are needs to be incurred on obtaining the duplicate certificates as there is no threat of share or bond certificates getting manipulated or uh, misplaced now. So these are the benefits of having our depository services in place. And that's huge guys. That's way too better. Life has been like awesome. Once this depository system has been come into place. I've seen a few of the share certificates in my life as well. And they are like all a uh, huge amount of costing. Just, they look like that one. So their paper, their craft, their stamp duty charges, all these can be saved with this depository system. I hope you guys got the complete clarity with respect to this aspect as well. Now, what do you need to do? You just need to revise whatever has been like told and shared with you guys because that is something which is extremely important for you to note. Perfect guys, that kind of hope and belief on you guys. I'll be saying thank you on behalf of the Edupedia while keep interacting via questions, queries and YouTube comment boxes. I would love to answer each one of your queries and grievances. Stay connected guys and if in case you like our video, do give us a thumbs up and a positive response so that we can provide you awesome videos like as usual. Stay connected, that will help us in understanding on each way, 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 way better. I'll say thank you with this. Love you all. God bless. I'll see you in the next presentation.